Welcome to Demolition Ranch. There's no water out here. And I would like water to be right there in case of fire. Because sometimes we do things with fire and as you can see it's a very heavily wooded area. And I would like to be able to put out fires quickly. We have a fire truck but it's all the way over there and I was like, man, for like small things it'd be nice to just have some water like a water hose. Two options. Option number one, we have a thousand gallon water tank behind the armory over here. And I was just thinking I could come off of that pipe, a little T, dive underground, and then bury it in a trench all the way over there, 200 yards away where the range is. Option two, 500 gallon water tank. It was on my fire truck and is no longer being used. I was thinking with this, I put it up on a hill right next to the range, pipe down water like, uh, it's like 100 feet, and then we have water. Pros, it's self-filling. It's rainwater collected off this building. It fills itself up. And then also self-pumping. It's got a pump in the bottom of it. I think it's plenty of pressure to get all the way down there and give us water pressure. Pros, much closer, much less digging. I do not own a trencher. So I'd have to dig it all by hand or with a bobcat, which would take a long time. Also, I don't know if this would have enough pressure over that long of a run. It may be pretty weak. This one, the pressure will be based on gravity. So there's also probably not gonna be a whole lot of pressure from that. But I think it'll be enough. If it's up in a tree, I don't know. I've decided we're doing that. It's the greatest idea I've ever had. We just use gravity. Gravity's free. And there's infinite of it. And it'll pull the water right down, right where we need it, at the gun range. And then I don't have to trench nearly as far. I still gotta trench it, but like 100 feet instead of like 600 feet. This should work. Y'all wanna see something cute? It's pretty cute. Hi. Come here, goaties. Yeah, goat. They're fast. Jeez, they're getting a workout. We're gonna have some strong goats. I'm driving to the top of the range right now, which is where we'll put the big tank. This goes down, you can see the dueling tree down there, goes down to the range. So I'm thinking somewhere here, oh, that might be a perfect spot right there. Right here, I see a flat, not a spot. We'll put that tank and then I gotta figure out where to run a pipe down the hill. Maybe I won't bury it, because it's gonna be real hard to try to bury a pipe here. The only reason I wanted to bury it was to protect it from cold. I think I'll just put a valve up at the top so when it's going to freeze, we just, yeah, leave it empty. That's a good plan. And we'll just bury it down there where it's flat and I can actually get to it. I'm gonna go get the bobcat and we'll bring the tank up here and flatten out a spot for it. This is gonna be great. If y'all poop on my barn floor, I'll be very upset with you. Okay. Your ghost's getting fat. Y'all got some fat goats. Sweet pea, you big fatty. <laughs> got our bucket. I got our tank. Most of the shooting happens right over there. What I like about this range is there's just hills on all sides of it. Uh, the hill we shoot into is probably 40 feet above where we're shooting from. And so theoretically we might, you know, bounce a bullet off a target or something and it could make it up here. But all that land's mine too and no one's ever out there. There's actually a good chance that no bullets ever go up here. But if they did, they'd have to make it through all that brush and they just go into all that brush where there is no one. So what I'm getting at is I think this thing will be pretty safe from any bullets or fragments flying up here if I put it over here because it's off to the side of the range and it's, you know, 40 feet above the range. I think it would stink if this thing, you know, was a casualty of demolition ranch, but it's a risk I'm willing to take. I was just looking, the road goes up that way. And so I could put it on the other side of the range over there and it would be like 
probably 10 feet higher, but then I have to go a lot further with the pipe to get down to the little pavilion, the little shooting pavilion we have. Let me see how much pressure this thing should have at the bottom. So when you turn on a faucet outside, hooked to a water hose, and the water goes all through that hose, that's because you have water pressure in your pipes. Average water pressure is anywhere between 25 and 80. Usually in the country, um, you have a little bit lower. I think we had around 30 PSI. And then, you know, in the city, it's usually higher. It's usually around like 50. So, I just typed in this little calculator here, which is hard to see in the sun, but for 30 feet of water, it'll give you 13 PSI. I think we currently are at about 40, and that will give you 17.3 PSI. If I wanted to go to 50, which I probably should seeing this, that'll go to 21.65 PSI. So pretty close to what a water faucet in the country, um, you know, if you're on a well and you got old stuff, like usually it's, it's lower than if you're in an apartment in the city or something. All right, I'm gonna go look over there because if I can get 10 feet higher, that does add a lot of pressure. It's probably worthwhile. Hmm, the ground's a lot less dirt here, a lot more rock. And then I have to snake a pipe through all that, which is super thick and twice as far. For four more PSI. And actually, there's gonna be a little bit of pressure drop just because it's a longer run, so maybe it's not even four more PSI. <sighs> Easy route? or hard, possibly better route. I think if it was a guaranteed better, I would do it. But since it's not, I think I'm gonna go the easy route. And if the water pressure's too low, then I'll have to figure out something else. I mean, that's the good thing about it. It's not gonna be permanent. We can try something, it doesn't work, we'll try something else. Got her set. I like this because it's right by my dirt road, so I can bring the fire truck up here, fill this thing up, um, and so we always have water on the ready. Now there's there's another reason I wanted to do this over just using the fire truck one, or piping it underground from our little armory tank. It's because the fire truck also has a 500 gallon water tank on it, but I've always thought that thing takes like 45 minutes to fill up with a water hose. But if I had another 500 gallons at the ready that I could easily just like drive the fire truck under and open up a two inch pipe and let it fill up, it would probably fill up, I don't know, in five to 10 minutes. And so I'm gonna have a two inch pipe running all the way down this hill and have one uh, pipe coming out up high where I can drive the fire truck underneath it and can just open a huge valve and it will fill up that fire truck and it'll split off from there and go down to a smaller, probably three quarter inch or one inch pipe over to a faucet um, that we can use for water hose and filling up. So we need water down here a lot. Um, and kind of in case of emergency, like fire, that, that is like a, that's a big thing. But if we had anything real sketchy, we'd just have the fire truck because that thing has lots of pressure. I mean, that thing shoots water over trees. This is not gonna shoot water over trees, but it'll help. So this is going to be my secondary reserve tank for the fire truck as well, two piece series. And you can see I put it at a little bit of an angle, so the low end's there, so it'll get all the water out, which I think actually maybe a little less of an angle would be good. I don't know, I'm nitpicking. So now I need to go measure the run so I can go to the store and buy a freaking bunch of pipes to make this work. It's gonna work. All I could find was a 12 foot measuring tape. I have a 25 somewhere, but I don't know where it is. Ugh. So I'm gonna have to go back and yeah, do all this 12 feet at a time. This will be great. What if instead of taking water all the way to that pavilion, I just only took the water to right here? Plus we have a tree stand in this tree right here. And so that could be the perfect spot for the pipe to come up high to dump down into the fire truck 
and we could just run the pipe down the tree and have a hose right here on this tree. You got, you know, 50 foot hose would reach everything on the range over there. And then I don't have to dig a hole another 50 feet to the pavilion just to run a hose from there. Less run, less work, less drop in pressure. It's a perfect scenario. I'm gonna go measure. Man, twice the length would sure be nice right now. I mean, it's it's an average size tape measure. Three. Who is this is not as easy as I thought. Four, that's 48 feet already. Holy cow, this is gonna suck. Oh, trees everywhere. Five. Ow. 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 Nine. Nine times 12 is 108. Probably get an extra pipe just in case, in case I measured wrong, which I could have. Uh, maybe an extra couple of pipes. <laughs> and I think they have those in 10, uh, if not 10, eight foot sections. So this should work. I'll get some connectors, I'll get some glue. It's gonna be great. But first, before we go shopping, a word from our sponsor. What are you doing? Do you need a spot? That's a lot of weight. I'm a lot of man. Hey, Mayor, I, I do, I do need a spot. Just a little, a little like take like ten pounds on. I'll be good. Hey, this episode is sponsored by Policy Genius. If you have anyone in your life who relies on your income, you need life insurance. It's just that simple. We all hope you don't need life insurance, but mortgage payments, debt, and other expenses don't disappear when you're gone. Policy Genius is your one-stop shop to find and buy the right insurance for you at the right price. Policy Genius was built to modernize the life insurance industry. Their technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from top companies with just a few clicks. Something I love about it is you can see all of your options in one place instead of having to look around. It saves so much time. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $17 a month for $500,000 worth of coverage. It's super easy to get started. Just go to the website, enter your information, adjust the coverage amount you're looking for, and boom, options. Licensed agents help you find your perfect coverage in as little as a week. They have no incentive to recommend one insurer over another so you can trust their guidance. There's no edit fees and your personal information is kept private. No wonder they have thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot. Thanks again to Policy Genius for sponsoring this episode. Your loved ones deserve a financial safety net and you deserve a smarter way to find and buy it. I bet y'all thought this little bit was fake. You're right, because I can bench 495 pounds. <laughs> Head over to policygenius.com slash off the ranch or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quote and see how much you can save. I think I got everything between that and this to get everything going on this project. I hope I didn't forget anything. Because then I'll have to come back here and it makes everything take twice as long. almost stepped on my manhole. I'm gonna organize these things to kind of organize my thoughts and make sure I got everything that I think I will need to make this work. I think this will work. This will extend all the way up the hill to the tank. Comes down here, hits this T. This is all two inch pipe. And the T comes down and will be hanging in the air. So this pipe will actually be all up here. So I'm gonna run like three quarters of the way down the hill and then it'll come straight across to this tree. I'll probably need to make like a cable above it to suspend it or something. I'm not really sure. I don't know if that's possible, but I wanna be higher than the tank on the fire truck, which is like right here. It actually really doesn't need to be that high. This this pipe is just not cut, but that could be cut actually. Yeah, that'll actually only probably be like three feet long. So this valve will be up there. So you drive the fire truck right under, open the valve, you have a two inch pipe, gravity flowing from 40 feet up. That should, I think, fill the tank fairly quickly. If you just want to use the water hose, the pipe comes over, continues over to the tree at about probably I think like eight feet is that pipe's gonna have to be here. So you just back your water truck up under it. But when you're not using water truck, pipe goes here, eight feet up, hits that elbow, which will be up down the tree, and then runs down, again, uncut pipe, so it'll be a lot shorter. And then comes down, and it goes down to a one inch pipe with a one inch valve. And then 
it will be reduced again to three quarter inch pipe. Basically, since we don't have high pressure, I wanted this to stay as big of a pipe as we could for as long as possible, just to reduce the resistance in the pipe so we can flow as much water as possible. This pipe also will be as short as possible. It's just not cut right now. And then you'll screw your water hose right onto this. I have a big valve, so I actually thought about getting one of those little hose bib, but the hole in them is teeny tiny, which is not a big deal when you have 50 PSI. When you have a lot less than that, you want it to just be as big of a lumen as possible. So that is the smallest it goes, is when it gets finally down to a water hose size, is the smallest we have. But that valve is a one inch valve, much bigger than what is on a tiny hose bib. I'm gonna start cutting and gluing pipe. I think I'm gonna come down the hill. Man, I should build this part first. I need to get the fire truck over here. I'm gonna come down the hill first so I can get some of this out of the way before I bring the fire truck in. And I'll start gluing and hooking stuff. It's gonna be great. or something. Oh, it's a deer. I think. Oh yeah, it's a buck. Look at that guy. It's a little young buck. That's Quattro. Quattro. Come here, boy. It's me. Quattro, no! It's me, dude. Y'all hear that? That's an epic montage incoming. <laughs> So it comes down here, and then right about here is where it's gonna start lifting off the ground and come and float above the ground down here. Now, of course, this is an empty pipe right now and it's resting on tiny branches and dead branches. That won't work when it's full of water because it's gonna be like 10 times as heavy. I think I'm gonna get some kind of cable and hook from like there to there and wrap it like real tight and then just tie a bunch of ropes to support this, holding it up with the metal cable. I think. That's my plan. I don't know. This is it's kind of sketch. I think I actually need to get the fire truck now, back it in here so I can see exactly how high it needs to be and also use the fire truck to kind of put these pipes on it while they dry. Oh. It's been a while since I started this thing up. God, that beep is annoying. Just give her a little time. Good to go. So I had to work the cobwebs out. It started like as soon as I turned the camera off. Hey Bertha, coming through. What's your emergency? For as big as this thing is, it actually does have some pretty good get up and go. Like, it can drive on the highway going 70. Like, it's got, yeah, it's a seven speed transmission. Cat diesel engine. I like this thing. That right there is the filler on top of the tank. And my plan was to just have this pipe high enough that I could like back the truck up under it and fill the tank. But then I noticed the cab is only like, it's like three feet higher. So I thought if I just have the whole pipe three feet higher, then I could just loop the truck around. So I could just drive in straight, never have to back up, come right in here and I'm good. The truck's about 10 feet tall, so that means this pipe needs to be like 11 feet off the ground, probably, to make it to where it'll clear easy. Which means, shoot dog, it means it needs to come in like, it needs to start elevating off the ground right there and going out straight this way, across. Which means it's going to be over the ground for, I don't know, each of these is 10 feet, so, geez, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 feet is gonna be suspended in the air. <laughs> I 
I don't know if it's possible. But I'm gonna try it, because that would be the ideal scenario. Let's we'll see what we can do. We have a T on now, and I put it about a foot over because I'm really close to that tree, and I think I'm gonna take out these two little trees. So I'll be able to swing wider in here, which will bring the truck over about a foot. So that'll be good enough, and it's gonna be up here, and I'll probably put a little flexible hose on it so we can like run into it and get out of the way, but then I'll be able to like put the flexible hose in there to fill it up. It'd be great. Mikey's up the hill, hooking a cable onto a tree. Uh, the base of a tree, and we're gonna run it straight to this tree and try to get it as tight, as taut as we can, and then have a bunch of supports holding this thing up. That's the plan. So we gotta get this cable, which is hooked over there, tight now. Tightening cables is hard. This is like a 50 foot cable. Um, we're gonna use this come along and try to pull it around that tree. We have a really weird angle here because I don't have anything to hook it to besides the fire truck, which is six feet below that. Wish us luck. which is the best attempt, as you guys know. Fourth try, which as you guys know is the best try. <laughs> That's how you do it, folks, first try. We got tension let off, this thing is pretty good. Now we are gonna leave everything hooked up just in case we have to retension it when we actually put water in this thing because it's gonna hold, I don't know, 300 more pounds or something, so it might not work. My thought is a bunch of wires all the way down holding that up like that, and I'm gonna wait to finish the piping until we have it all hung because I'm not sure how it's gonna, it's gonna push it further down here when I hook it on. But plan is it'll have a big valve right here, and then a flexible hose that comes down there that I can drive under with this thing, put the flexible hose right in there. It'll be great, maybe even that green suction hose there. And then another two inch pipe will come straight all the way here, hit an elbow, it's that one down there, there's an elbow on that, and then it'll go down the tree, and it'll hook up to this, this will plug into the two inch pipe, that'll have a valve there, and a hose will screw right onto that. So that will be how our water hose works. All in theory, we'll see. But sun's going down here, so we are wrapping up for the day. We'll come back out here another time and finish up our watering system. If we could figure out a way to make this a zip line and a watering system. No, that's too much. My fire truck is broken. Not actually the truck, but my water pump. Look at this, there's a crack. It's kind of hard to see, but right there in the housing. So whenever I turn the water on, it all just pours out of there which is a big bummer, watch this. We have water in here. It just all comes squirting out of there and you can imagine if there's pressure, it really sprays out of there. So, I'm not sure if I can just buy that pump housing or if I have to get a whole new trash pump. They call these things trash pump, but it's basically just a motor hooked to a water pump. Um, but I bought it all as one unit and they're not crazy expensive, but it just stinks that this thing's like, less than two years old, and it wasn't because of the freeze. Um, this was actually, I've known this was broken for a while. So, I don't know, it's a big bummer that my pump is already broken and I can't even use it. So anyway, we have no fire protection at the ranch. If you wanna set the ranch on fire, now is a great time because uh, I won't be able to do anything. So the ranch thing had just some old, you know, classic 65 Mustang headlights that they never worked. Uh, we didn't ever have any wiring. I mean, we had wiring to them, but they weren't wired into the car, so like we never had any lights. So we thought, let's go ahead and make this cool. So we got these new lights, and you can see they have an LED ring around them. And they actually look way better in real life. It's not showing up very good on this because of all the brightness back behind. But there's also an app. So we just got a bunch of different settings. You can change it, change color. They have like patterns and stuff. 
Lots of spinnings. Crazy. So basically, these are factory stock, original 1965 GT350 Mustang headlights. Looks so good. And of course, we got the little ones on the inside of the grill there too. Finishing up that side as well. This thing's gonna look good at the next Cletus and Cars. So you can see the fog lights are on there and the headlights are on there and we have a little red ring. I think we'll just leave it as a like static red ring. I don't think I like the spinning, but looks good. Man, we're gonna look freaking fresh at Cletus. Dang, look at that. It's been a while since you've got to look at that view, but dang, we just made a little dinner and now we looked out the window and saw that. Golly, so cool. Guy's just on fire back there. So we get uh, some decent sunrises and some decent sunsets up here on the big hill. Ooh, and we are getting a fairly decent sunset tonight. We're actually heading to Las Vegas for something that's pretty fun and we get to do every year and this year we're gonna do it a little extra big. So be sure to check back. We're actually gonna have, uh, I think, one video on Demo Ranch for our Vegas trip and two videos on the Off The Ranch channel. So be sure to come back and check that out. Look at that little view out down there by the fire pit. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Off The Ranch. I love you. We'll no. see you next time. You hear the goat? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the goat saying we'll see you next time. <laughs> Oh. Hey, what camera is that? Number. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Mare. Oh, yeah!